Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, you know, PlayStation VR is something very near and dear to my heart. I mean, Skyrim VR, one of my favorite experiences this year. Resident Evil 7, up, right up there at the top of my Game of the Year list. But I think what's so interesting about this medium is that it really affords a lot of new and interesting experiences, experiences you couldn't get any other way. And one of those experiences involves comedy. So I thought it would be fun if we could invite some friends in here to talk a little bit about what it's like to make comedy games in VR. So please welcome Justin Roiland from Squanch Games and William Pugh from Crows, Crows, Crows. Hey, whoa, whoa, the mic's on. How's it going? Justin, William, oh, thank please. you for joining us. Look please. at these rock stars. Oh, come on. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Sleepy stars. Yeah, indeed. So, gentlemen, first of all, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Accounting Plus. It's yes. official. It's coming to PlayStation VR. And uh, it looks to have received quite a bit of attention in, in that sort of that, that, the yeah. transition. Yeah, I mean, you know, and the plus... That plus. Not there for nothing. That's right. So it plussed. It's got plussed up. So uh, it's 200 percent. Let's make it really clear. It's like 200 plus percent. Yeah. <laughs> Easily 200. The you word could go plus. up to 30, maybe. Yeah. I mean, we haven't crunched the numbers quite down to the you know, exact well, percentage. There's, but there's, well, that's what we're going to do after this. There's a degree or a? There's a curve. Or a chart? What are different kinds of degrees? There's, there's, there's the centigrade and Fahrenheit? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget Kelvin. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what the game's about, is degrees. Yeah. And, uh, right. um, and Sounds pluses. Sounds compelling, yeah. Yeah, there's Sounds lots compelling. of pluses in it. But no, go ahead. What were you going to ask? Sorry, we're, I, being, we're being dumb. Not at all, not at all. Please, be, be, uh, be as silly as you want. I was going to say, let's watch that new trailer. Oh. Yes. The king is dead. The north wind howls across the wastes, and with it comes dark tidings. The king is dead. Fuck you! What are you doing here in my place? What are you doing in my place? Get the fuck out of here! You get the fuck out of here! What are you doing in my place? This is my tree world! Well, who are you? How did you get here? This is my crazy tree. Get out of here. This is, is this accounting on PlayStation VR? Yes. We need Satan to get here soon. Bring in the death thing. Thank you for cleaning up my mess. I am so happy. Oh, you didn't even know my name. Whoa, 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 whoa. what the fuck? You gotta keep that shit on me. You said it, child. Come on, man. We're a gang. There's the plus. Yeah. <clears throat> I love that trailer. Honestly, one of the, my favorite trailers here from the, the Game Awards and PlayStation experiences here. So uh, super crazy, super awesome. William, I thought I'd start with you. Uh, you know, tell me a little bit about Crows, Crows, Crows and what it is that you folks do. Crows, Crows, Crows is a team of complex people with <laughs> complex feelings about things. Uh, we got together First, in about 2014, uh, me and Dominic Johan, my art director and co-founder. Uh, and then uh, just recently this year, we've, uh, we've blown up to 10 people. And we make narrative games, very artistic, very intellectual. Sophisticated stuff. Yeah, it's complex. Not everybody can understand what <laughs> I'm doing. But, you know, if people have seen a lot of these things, they'll be like, okay, I see, I see what. You have to have a I very high IQ here. to understand, right? Yeah. <laughs> that whole thing. <clears throat> well, yeah, and then that, we, brought that that, we brought that forward into Accounting Plus, yeah. which you need to be very smart to understand. <laughs> and you've, got, you, you've worked on some really interesting games over the years. I mean, the Stanley Parable, for one. Tell us a little bit about kind of your design philosophy and how that all kind of comes together. My design philosophy is take away as much stuff as you can to think about and then try and make something funny out of something that you can't fuck up. <laughs> like, if you've, got, if you've got a battery and a place to put that battery, 
and a cooling machine and a <laughs> you're phone. S- you're still going to have people not a, knowing what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, <coughs> you do that, people still might not get it. So, yeah. you know, can't imagine putting um, any, any, any genuine gameplay into my games. They'll all be, I'll be a walking simulator till I die. <laughs> Justin, you've got a rich background as well, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and what you're up to with Squanch Games? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of stuff. I'm exhausted. Uh, <clears throat> but um, TV stuff, you know, Rick and Morty and, and um, other unannounced things. Thank you. Th- oh, 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 geez, easy, easy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and, then, uh, and then, yeah, like, uh, the game stuff is incredible. We, we've got a bunch of stuff cooking that we, that we can't announce yet, but... Um, yeah, VR and just emerging technologies are, you know, for in in concert with game gaming and, and narrative. I don't know what happened. I think I something clicked in my brain a few years ago. Uh, I got I got a Vive kit early. Um, I got the PSVR the second I could get my hands on it, and uh, all of it is just uh, j- just being in a game like that is is something I dreamed about since I was a kid. You know, I never thought it was going to come. <clears throat> to, to give you the really dry, boring answer, you know, like the holodeck on Star Trek Next Generation, I was, I, I, I hated that show. It would come out, come, it would be the, the death of all the cartoons, you know, in the afternoon. <laughs> I'm like, no, the cartoons are done. <clears throat> and then an episode with the holodeck came on, and I was like, what the, can I swear? Yeah, sure. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> they're, they're in a fucking fake, <clears throat> sorry, it's very early for me. They're in a fake fucking room, and I remember just like I'm, I'm 12, so I'm thinking about like I would I would have sex with girls in there, and I, I mean to be completely honest, I mean you know I'm not a pervert, but I was just like that's the 12 year old mind for you, and I'm like I'm watching this fucking show, and then I was like watching that show, and it was like there were episodes that had nothing to do with the holodeck, and I was into Star Trek, but whatever, all of it circles back to today where it's like oh my god we kind of are sort of close to the holodeck now. Like we actually, and, and it seems like all the hardware is just moving so fast in a good way. And, um, you know, the fact, the, the, the ability to be involved and actually make content um, is, is uh, I'm super lucky to be able to, to do stuff like this, you know, with, with people like William and, and his team. So yeah. Stop it. <laughs> and, then, and then our team at Squanch Games too. Like we're ju- we just have, it's just a, a bunch of great people making really fun stuff and, you know, we're, 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 we're led by let's have fun. Like let's, let's, we're not forcing anything. We're making ourselves laugh. We're being silly. We're, we're obviously making stuff that we think is good and that we want people to enjoy and actually not suck. But at the same time, we're not, we're not, we're not hampered by the stress of like, okay, this has to be perfect. And, you know, it's more just like following our bliss and just having a blast and, I mean, the original accounting, what we did that, the lion's share of it in like four days. Yeah. I uh, mean, really, it was insane. And, and then. Finding it out, finding out answers to <laughs> questions we didn't even want to know we had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how did you two start working together? I mean, what, what kind of drew you two together? Um, mutual fans, and then also the, well, the, the, he lied to me and said he worked at Titanfall Games when I was in the Titanfall building. I realized <laughs> I was in the building where Titanfall Games, or wait, Titanfall Games, Respawn. Yeah. Um, sorry. So Respawn, I'm in the Respawn building, and I'm like, holy shit, I wonder if, I, I tweeted out, I'm like, does anyone who follows me work at Respawn? I'm hoping, I'm, I'm like, I, at the time I didn't have that many followers on Twitter, and then William's like, I do. I work at Respawn, and then I he followed follow him. me. I got the follow. Yeah, up and I didn't another put it together step in the at the in time the ladder didn't. of this world. <laughs> I didn't put it together at the time that he was Stanley Parable, which <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was a big fan yeah, of. I was yeah. just a horrible. And he lied, and then I'm saying, I'm, "Hey, I'm literally in your building, like right now. I would love to meet like every you know anybody." It and was um, at this point that I thought. Oh, I've got a problem with my plan. <laughs> <laughs> and then he came clean, and I'm like, oh. But then when he, then I realized that he made Stanley Parable. I'm like, oh, well, this is a great connection in and of itself. So then we continued talking. And these were, again, this was before any hardware had shipped. This is like, you know, I had tried the Vive. I tried it the week after they announced it at GDC in 2015, I believe that was. Yeah, that's and, um that. And so I was right there at the very beginning. And... Uh, and so we were just talking about all kinds of stuff. Locomotion, how do you... I mean, just everything that everybody who's digging into VR is talking about, you know, right now. So, and we would just Skype. He's in England, I'm in, I'm in LA, and we're just 
Skyping and talking for hours, and then that eventually led to let's let's game jam, let's make something crazy, which became accounting, and then accounting plus. The it, legend continues. Is a whole other thing. The return of Jafar. Yeah, the return that of Jafar. The, that was from, the other that, was that we were gonna. That was gonna be the other logo, <laughs> but then we were like, Jafar isn't in it. Also, that could we we don't want to confuse anyone because it's very confusing. It's a different Jafar, yeah. not the one you're thinking of from Disney. But anyways, yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, and we also had to cut Jafar from the game. That's another reason that we we probably <laughs> we probably shouldn't talk about that. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about the game itself. I mean, what is it that you do um, in in this game? And I think we actually have some footage that we could show here. Uh, but tell us a little bit about like how the like, the gameplay itself works. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a bag of moments, really. I mean it's it's you are you're an accountant, and which we think is a very noble profession. Accountant. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty honorable. If you think it's about it, for a like long time. every one of you guys comes across an accountant, whether directly or indirectly, at some point in your life, where so they're crunching numbers and they're doing your taxes or helping a tax person figure out your things. But before we could let anybody play accounting, we, uh, we knew that we'd have to give them a test to make sure that they were smart enough to play it. Yeah, that's uh, what this is. This is yeah, so you can see you've got to rotate around. Yeah. Appreciate, and it's, the, it's appreciate the game from its multiple creative angles. And it's kind of like saying to you, hey, like you're, gonna, you're about to be an accountant. This is an important job. You did a really Are you up to the task? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. You and then you know you so run you through the <laughs> through the through the test and. I don't no, what happens if I'm not oh, smart enough to get through this part? Has no gravity, you're gonna have to go online and research what you, you know. If you if if you hit a wall here, you, you're yeah. You might need to. <laughs> you might not be a gamer possibly. <laughs> 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 this might be your first video game. You might be grandma if you if you can't get past the uh, tutorial, but. Or the, uh, the, the the test. Sorry, yeah. I didn't say it's not a tutorial. I, not a tutorial. I apologize. Um, but yeah, and then and then and then as you, you got to clean up your office. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do in this game. You know, it's it's <laughs> like yeah, and but there's VR in it, so you know it's the future. Yeah, is VR because it's, the it's 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 accounting in it's VR accounting, so it's actually not just. It's it's not just normal accounting. It's it's virtual reality accounting. I mean, look, I'm gonna I'm just gonna cut to the chase on this. This is a very strange concept for a game. I mean, what? Yeah, I mean, like you're doing accounting What's in VR. What's strange about it? <laughs> yeah, it's totally normal. <laughs> it's a common thing. I mean, happens. how do you even have an idea like this? It's just so it's so out there, right? I mean, I, I you know we we uh, we. <laughs> this has nothing to do with accounting, like, wh right? No, oh, when you're in the ca accounting office, you've got the you've got the tree world. Yeah. You've got the you've got the cooling machine, the battery. You've got the little guy in the tree. <laughs> they I teach mean, you all this at accounting. Yeah, this is all standard, you know, standard first issue. year accounting. Yeah. Stuff, okay. You know? Okay. Any well, accountants will tell you this is <laughs> this very. Is where we this is very pro. This is actually the thing that the count accountants don't want you to know. Okay. You find this stuff out, and you're like, I want to be an accountant. So what's with the guy in the tree? Like, what, what is this all That's, about? He's just really upset. That's tree guy. He does not like that you are in his face, messing with his stuff. I mean, this, this, is, this is an example of just something that I want to see more in VR, which is like an NPC that's very aware of what you're doing, and it's <laughs> really like focused on you. And, um, you know, in this particular case, he's very upset. He's, he's very, he's got a strong personality. He's very selfish. Um, but yeah, he's very his aware of you. His needs are simple. Yeah, his needs just his needs are simple. Just leave him alone yeah. and go away. Stop. Get out of there. Stop stuff. touching his things. Um, and uh, and that's basically it. But I I love that. I love I love how responsive he is to all the different things you're doing. He's just watching you from his little tree nook and yelling the whole time. There's something but. just refreshing about, I think, this kind of experience, right? I mean, I've never experienced... Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about this one. I was so wondering this is all new stuff. I mean, you know, again, the plus, you know, accounting plus. I mean, there's so much stuff in the, the... This is, you know, the original accounting was a very relatively, you know, short experience, and it was free, and we, 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 got, we, got, we got together in Berlin, and we, we, we jammed for another, uh, I don't know how many, long, like long a, time. And we, we we figured out all the new, <laughs> all, the new <laughs> stuff, 
All, all the new crazy stuff uh, for Accounting Plus. And there's a ton of new stuff, and a ton of new spaces and areas, and a lot of hidden stuff. Um, the zoo level is going to be probably the toughest one for people to yeah. find. We got we got about three hidden levels in. One of them's hidden behind a big door. There's a secret level on it. Yeah. Uh, another one. That one's another hidden one. behind a big door. That, that one will be pretty easy to. Find. Another one's <laughs> uh, a bit a bit more difficult. And then the hardest one is the secret zoo level. Yeah. This we think a very small percentage of people. Will find yeah. It. I mean, it was a lot of work for what ultimately will be a sliver of people that, that get to experience it. But we figure, you know, leave it up to the Twitch streamer or the whoever to find that. And you know, everyone's probably thinking, oh, the zoo level, d 12 hours after the game comes out, people will be in the zoo level. No. No. Nope. Nice try. Do no. you think like the streaming Not gonna culture, happen. you think the streaming culture of Twitch and, and these other like sort of social media has, has kind of encouraged developers to kind of squirrel away interesting experiences because this is a theme I've been seeing increasingly. Possibly. I mean, I think it's great. I, I, I think they should. I, I it's an incentive for developers to kind of hide weird stuff that normally you wouldn't put time and effort into because you know you're thinking about your budget, your schedule, and you're like, okay, so one percent of players are going to experience this. It's not worth it. Cut it. It's easy to cut. I mean, you're always scoping down, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. as you develop a game. It's con it's a constant struggle of scoping and and budget and schedule, and um, but, but those individualized experiences that not many people get to yeah. have yeah. is what makes stuff and the experience unique to you. What the hell is going on here, by the way? Like this is the this <laughs> is the bone xylophone. Yeah, this so is these the two bone characters, yeah, skeletons. I Sin suppose. Siamese bone twins. <laughs> we sh should we talk about the cast at all? Like, I, I sure. <laughs> we, we have we have so many amazing people doing voices in this yeah. game. Yeah, um, my 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 number one favorite would probably be Rich Fulcher. Yeah, Rich the Fulcher Mighty plays one of the one of the gang members. He, he's he's incredible. Cassie Steele is in this. She's amazing. Uh, incredible improv. You you would know her from Rick and Morty as Tammy. Everyone hates Tammy. Right, right. Um, Cassie Steele is the voice of Tammy, and then she now doing other characters in in the show. Um, and then Echo Callum is in the game. He's incredible. He, you would know him from uh, Arrow, Green Arrow. Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. But he's amazing. He, all really great improv people. <laughs> um, this is so good. But yeah, uh, yeah. There's just we, we got uh, we got so many good, good, amazing, fun people that are just all friends. You know, that just 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 wanted to come over and have fun and record a bunch of nonsense. And. One of the things that's great, I think, about this, which is sort of a one of our, at least, I, I, you, you do this a lot. You guys have been doing this forever, I feel like, which is the sort of opt-in kind of di dialogue where it's like there's all this extra stuff you could experience. There's a lot of replayability, too, um, where it's like you're not forced to sit there and listen to a long, droning-on cutscene. You can sort of opt-in to stay and listen if you want to, but... Like there's about twenty there's about twenty minutes of dialogue for this door character. If yeah. You keep not wow. Yeah. Like I mean, he so won't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to hear it all, you can, but you by no means have to. You once you figure out the puzzle and how to get past it, you can just keep going. But it's really fun. Like that was the, that was the thing that we continued to sort of to to do for every room, every space, every section of the game. Just let's let's record an exorbitant amount of audio. It's really funny and weird, and it gets weirder and weirder and weirder the longer you're listening. But by the time we get to the towards the end of it, everybody in the game is going to know what they need to do to get out and continue moving the game forward. So, um, so yeah. Uh, but 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 if you want to just sit around and listen to whatever the hell these characters have to say, you can. Um, so it's very like opt-in. You know, you're not you're not you're not forcing a player to sit through a long, boring cutscene. William, um, in your experience as a gamer, was there sort of an aha moment for VR? Like something where you played it? I mean, clearly you're working on VR now, so there was probably a moment where you played some game and you just said, okay, I'm, I, I can see where this could go. I can see the possibilities here. What, what, what was it? That game was... That game was actually probably accounting, which sounds like a bullshit thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it was after, after a couple... After about a week or two... Uh, of working on it when we had like something together and I saw and, and like I saw like oh this tree guy in here He's saying like fuck you get out of my world <laughs> yeah. And you got the cooling machine there and like taking that battery in and out of the cooling machine. I thought I was like aha VR is bullshit. It's not gonna go anywhere like clearly <laughs> clearly this shit's not gonna work It's not it can't be profitable and it's just it's just and he's been pretty great. Yeah, right 
And I've, we and, I, and I've remained Going in bankrupt. VR, <laughs> doing VR in a way to just kind of... Reckless. Pun it, just punish myself, really. Yeah, very reckless behavior. Like, yeah, I, I, just, I just feel like... That was the day he realized this is a dead-end road. Yeah, and I, I've, been on, I've, been on that, I've been on that path for a year, and about a year and a half now, and... Taking a and lot it's out. It's all right, of you know. It's it's not too bad. This is what I have to deal with all the time. This, this, well, the sad. No, we can't all be we can't all be happy, just. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if you're not happy, please uh, buy Accounting Plus. It'll <laughs> make you. It'll get all your. I was going to say something make. else, but yeah, buy purchase Accounting. Get a PSVR headset, and uh, and buy Accounting Plus. Take a break from Skyrim, because. Yeah. You can come back to it. It's 9,000 hours. Skyrim's long. not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. but it's not going to get deleted from your hard drive unless you delete it yourself, which is that's on you, not <laughs> us. Accounting's a small file. How, how big is the file? What is it? Like, like a gigabyte? Yeah, I the mean, come on. One gigabyte? A lot of when dialogue. I scroll through my hard drive on my PS, my, 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 my PlayStation, and I see a game that's one gigabyte, I'm like, eh, not worth my time to delete. Too, yeah. too small. <laughs> I, see, I see like 20 gigs, 60, that's when I'm starting to go. Am I playing this? How long, when's the last time I played this one? And then I'll delete it because it's like, I need space. So, so that's the, the case for Accounting Plus. Accounting nice can and stay small. forever. It's it small. sneaks under the radar. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. low on the list. Yeah, you're scrolling. It's like, you know, you have your iPhone, you're scrolling through apps. You're like, okay, I need to free. I got to take a photo or a video. And you're scrolling through. What crap do I have that I don't use? And then you see those like... 512, you know, megabytes or one, you know, one gig. Those are the ones that go. That, that they're, they're done on an iPhone, but when you're talking, you know, 500 gigs or a terabyte, one gigabyte. What is that? That's nothing. Get out of here. Leave it alone. <laughs> it's 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 what is that? Point zero one point one. I don't know, man. I'm not a math know, professor. I'm not a math professor. Get off my back, <laughs> all you people, trying to get me to do math up here. You tricked me. Anyways, that was, that was my fault. I, that was great. I loved it. Um, but, you know, William, uh, I know you've, you've definitely been in games for a while, so I, I think you've got to come at VR development in a different way than you come at sort of traditional flat game development, as it's sometimes called. So, you know, what is the approach there? I mean, VR, is, it's just different, right? Uh, what do you mean in development, or do you mean in yeah. accepting something out? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's everything, because, I mean, you know, there's things, you, th there's things in VR, and, and who here has played VR? Who here has tried VR? Most All of you. All three yeah, of, of you. you. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. No, it was more than three. Yeah. You couldn't see uh, uh, on the... The lights, the surprise. Massive numbers of hands went up, but... um. Yeah, I mean, v VR, it's just different. There's, there's things that are riveting and compelling when you're playing them in virtual reality that if it was just on your TV set, I, I don't know if it'd be so riveting. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, well, I, 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 well, I mean, I, for, I, you probably have a... Nah, I was going to bullshit again. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I had a feeling. Um, you, for me, it's, it was, I've always been a gamer my entire life, like, hardcore. I mean, I would stay up all night playing games. I mean, you know, when I could. And uh, unhealthily so, like really bad. And to the point, I, I read stories about somebody dying because they had a clot and they're, they're playing for so long and they got up and like actually. God. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was like, I, I, I was scared for myself when I read that story. That's how bad it was for me. <laughs> and I still play as much as I can. Um, but I never had the bug to make games until I got into... Um, well, I mean, I, got, I had the first, the first Rift, you know, or was it called the Rift, the Oculus? When it mm -hmm. fared, the, the first Kickstarter, I was like on top of that and wish I had, wish I had uh, the means to, to, to invest back then, but whatever. Anyways, uh, but yeah, so I, I, was, I was fascinated by it. And then when I tried, I was already kind of thinking of game designs and, and stuff. And, and I, think, I think to answer your question, it's that the process is different because it's there's so much unknown and there's so much new to figure out and there's so much innovation that can be made right now in the space. Um, I think a lot of devs right now are really excited about that. It's like, oh, how do you move a player through a larger environment? So locomotion, which is I think a lot of people, I mean, back when we first started talking, that was like the Wild West. And I think now a lot of devs have kind of come up with all these amazing solutions for that. And then now there's all kinds of other ways. Like how do you, like right now for me, it's like, I want to create experiences that put you in a space with another character that really does feel alive and that it's really monitoring what you're doing and communicating with you. And those are the kinds of, those are the kinds of experience. And, uh, and combine that with a nexus of really great gameplay, you know, whatever that gameplay may be, you know, um, 
So just tried and true, what works, what's fun to do, what's sticky, you know, as the industry term is used a lot, like, you know, finding that sticky, fun gameplay. But then adding all of the interesting, like, I'm in a weird world now where I can look all around and I can turn around and I'm not in my apartment, I'm transported somewhere else. And bringing characters into that world that are alien or interesting or not, I mean, for me, it's not about like a guy in military garb that looks human and he's sort of somewhere in between the uncanny, uh, uncanny, uncanny, uncanny <laughs> valley. <laughs> uncanny valley. It's more about like a really stylized, interesting, you know, character, like something you might see on Rick and Morty who's like, you know, going on and on to you about what you need to do and you're like, where the fuck am I? What's going on right now? And, um, you know, no time to explain. We got, we got shit to do. Uh, I'm your partner, whatever the fuck it is, you know. <laughs> And, and you're with this character and you're doing weird shit and you're exploring worlds. And I mean, to me, that's, what v, that's where VR shines. Like every game I want to play is I want to explore weird worlds. I want to meet weird characters that feel like they're real and alive. And I want to I wanna, I wanna experience like fun, sticky gameplay. And um, I mean, if we, do our, if we do our best in those categories, then, then hopefully we'll succeed with, with with great games that are that are different and unique in VR, you know, that, that you couldn't do in traditional, yeah. you know? That's to me what's so exciting about it is, um, you know, we all love shooters, we all love RPGs, we all love, I mean, pretty much everybody loves games like that, but VR to me is exciting because you let you do things that you might not otherwise do or make things you might not otherwise make. And actually on that note, comedy is not something that we see a ton in traditional flat games, as cool people in the industry call them, you know, yeah. traditional games you play on your TV. I mean, Tim Schafer, there Double are Fine, some, though. There are some. They're legends at that. I, I laugh my fucking ass off playing Octodad. Yeah. <laughs> like just because, and it's not even that it's like it's not even like a setup punchline. Like it's not, no. it's not like comedy like in the traditional sense, but it's just the idea of it, the concept of it, and the way he moves and the physics and like the absurdity of the of the of the things being asked of you. Like just bring ice cream to your daughter. And you're knocking shit over, and it's like, you know, <laughs> and it's just like, I literally laugh out loud playing that game. Like, it's fucking hilarious. So, there are really good comedy games that are out there, and there's great studios making those games. And yeah, Tim Schafer's another example. Double Fine has been doing the, all their whole their whole their whole catalog is all sort of comedy based, and um, you know, I, I for me it's a safety blanket. <laughs> it's like, I mean, comedy is like the the thing you run, you know, the reign of t being take, taking things too seriously, you hide under the umbrella of comedy to, to protect yourself. I, I, I can't think of doing anything all serious. And I mean, God. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'd love to see you take on like I, something super no serious. No way. I mean, I, I would, I, I, believe me, I've had those moments of like, I want to do a really, you know, serious, like, I'm going to, I want to tell a story. I, I want to, I want to, like, move people. And then I start, I'm like... Five seconds in, you yeah, can't it hold just, it up. See, no, that's funny, though. It just turns yeah. into, there's, com comedy comes, it's like it can't. Yeah. Do, do you yeah. think VR as a unique opportunity, though, for comedy? I mean, do you think there's unique potential there? <laughs> Very impressive facial expressions. <laughs> like, he's really thinking, folks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, with normal <laughs> games, you're kind of stuck behind the interaction interface of a controller. Yeah. You're like, oh man, how do I express myself yeah. in this? And you can I can't laugh. You can, you can generate control. comedy through like, like Octodad by Young Horses. Like they they um, they make the clumsiness of uh, of of the controls work, and that's where the humor is derived from. But like on the on the opposite side of that, there are some some things you can only do in VR, only th stuff you can only do with like a body presence, that creates just instinctive humor. It's like um, like it's like the difference between books and like a descriptive passage of like of like two characters talking in a book versus a film where you see that conversation play out. There's some things you can only do in film that will be funny. There's some things you can only do in text which will be funny. And I think the same thing's true for VR and for non for non non VR games. And like it's stuff like dropping stuff, a lot of physical humor. Um, again, you can kind of make your input and output exchange like more fumbly and like that can create a lot of humor. Like we do a lot of things with like Oh, I'm awkwardly just kind of stood in a place, very either very close to a character, and like you have, you can, you can move through people's personal pieces of personal space. You know, you can make them feel uncomfortable in ways. Yeah. And then you know, just in, you can fuck with. I people mean, well, in, one in, example, in, one yeah. example specifically is like when people spawn into the king's room, 
they're way too close to the king. I've seen people like, <laughs> I've seen people like scream and jump back. And he's also really kind of unsettling looking and just white, like pale white. Um, and that that was a decision that was like spawn them right in front of his fucking face. <laughs> Um, and I mean, I don't know if that's comedy so much as fucking with people, but maybe it's comedy. I well, don't it's know. like you were saying about about Twitch streaming and streaming of stuff. Like again, with VR, that works into it. There's a new market emerging there in terms of in terms of ways to promote your game. Because like everyone's known, oh, we can use YouTube, people playing our games to promote, you know, our stuff. And that's why but we did the zoo VR, level. Like, yeah, like so we were like, let's 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 like get this. Let's like put as many. Crazy things in the zoo level. So super cool example. I mean, I swear people. to God, if we, I swear, and I we had this conversation in Berlin. I was like, if we if we spent this much time, if we just cut the zoo level and focused all of our energy into just stuff that everyone's going to see on the golden path, the game would be probably five times as long as what it actually <laughs> yeah. what it, what are the, uh, the original version. But then we put all this time into the freaking zoo level, and we were just committed to it. And the clown is there, and like, and um, yeah, you see the clown in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, he's um, like, he's like, um, don't forget about me. Yeah, he's that's like, don't, his line. Don't, that's don't. kind of his catchphrase. Yeah, like, or you, you like in the zoo level, it's a lot. It's a much larger level. Yeah, the rest of the rest of yeah, the yeah. There's game, locomotion. Like, there's, I mean, it's you're moving really about cool. and like, he's like, hey, don't forget about me if you go too far away. I like, just can't believe, like, I don't know. I like, find point me in the direction of another developer that's going to spend that much time on a level that is so hard to unlock um, and get to and find. With that literally has systems that are that are completely built for that specific space that are not used anywhere else in the game, and there's tons of zoo animals and there's the clown and there's all this stuff and I it's mean, so it's so weird. A day night cycle. There's like a whole. <laughs> There's a, there's a full uh, JRPG construct yeah, it inside. It doesn't go that far. But it runs <laughs> 60 frames per <laughs> second. The whole game runs 60 system. frame. Like it's a 60 frame per second, guys. Like we hit. <laughs> It will never go, It'll below, never go that below 60 frames. Guaranteed. guaranteed. That's a huge thing. We've tested it. Like, you know, you can't say that for so a lot of times. games. <laughs> so, what's the secret to making a great VR game? Shit. Just going to put that out there. Shit, man. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> to ask us when we find out if this is a great VR game <laughs> <laughs> from the fucking fans. Let, let's pretend you guys know what you're talking about. I think you do, but you know, uh, you never great, know. V Secret. great VR game. I mean, a lot of focus to listening. I don't know, like God, you can't listen to people. People don't know. What they're <laughs> yeah, people right. say they want multiplayer don't Skyrim listen. in VR, shooting out the dragons with their friends. Don't listen. They don't to want people. that. Don't focus test. Don't play. Don't 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 do play tests. They want to be in a room. Do what with you want. Their biggest fan. Be really like That's fight with your team as well. A lot. Get in arguments and say tell every, tell that tell everyone on your team that they're wrong. Um, be really angry and grumpy all during production and mm -hmm. hate hate everything and um, yeah, that's the secret I think. Yeah, just be really miserable and want constantly be daydreaming about being anywhere but but working on the game. Um, Obviously, I'm being incredibly sarcastic, and those are the opposite of things. I admire your commitment. <laughs> Good <laughs> to, commitment. To that horrible. Yeah, no, I mean, all the opposite of what I just said is probably um, have fun and embrace your team, test the game, listen to feedback, um, and also know if you have a vision that you're passionate about, it's, a, it's hard. It's like it's a fine line of like, I know that if you'll know this is important, this is going to work, but then also know the things that maybe aren't as important or, or you know, with feedback, you know, be, for me, I kind of need to sleep on it. Like we, we, we have a game that is unannounced that we're working on and we had to make some, some scoping, you know, some cuts and it was hard and it was like, those are things that I fell in love with, you know, narratively and whatever. And, you know, I got to sleep on it. I'm like, all right, let me just sleep on it. And, you know, I'm usually pretty good after a night of sleeping and I wake up and I'm like, okay, <laughs> we, we got to do what we got to do. And then I'll come up with a way to figure it out and narratively, you know, uh, sit, sew those things, you know, whatever got cut, you can narratively, like, patch that together. But, um, yeah, it's just having fun, honestly. I swear to God, the best stuff I've ever made is, is, was made when I was having fun, this included. Like, we had so much fun making this game. It was um, a hoot. It really Real was. Hoot. I mean, we were just, we, and, and, you know, the other thing that was interesting about this game is there was so little second guessing. I mean, you know, whether or not that, that shows in the final product with criticism or not, but, like, we, we, we were just like, I feel like we were just like shot out of a cannon making this game. Like we did not look back. We, we did a little scoping down. We cut a couple of things, but like, 
but we, we were just like, yeah, that idea is great. First pitch, great, awesome. Okay, we're going to do that. that. You know, I mean, it was just like, we were just, whatever was getting spit out was what we did. And it was, I don't know, it was like, it was so clear and fun and just quick. But to jump on the previous point about um, uh, good VR games. Yeah. Uh, like being in the space, like I started paying attention about, Two or three years ago, to the progress, like when when Valve when Valve sent out their first you know Vive Vive test kit, that that was when about the time when I started being like, okay, what what does it feel to actually play these? Because you know everyone's going crazy about it, uh, and I think the biggest step forward uh, in terms of v in terms of VR and the thing that people should embrace the most is realizing that a lot of what what defines games as a medium is coming from its history, which is coming from uh, times when there was super hard technical limitations over what what can be done, and uh, again, like the the format of the of how of, of how uh, the, all the all the content was monetized. Originally, in arcade, you had levels, you had co you had like lives because of coins, and like that's brought forward. But that doesn't always mean that we should stick to those conventions. And the best thing about VR, I think, is everybody's kind of seen it as a bit of a clean break with um, what's what should a game look like? What shouldn't a game look like? You know, in terms of like, now that you can inhabit a body, it's 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 different. It's like you you're, you're um, you can create powerful personal experiences yeah. for people, and you can have characters that don't talk to like your screen. It's like they're talking to you, and like so much of like what makes us tick and work in in real life and the, our, our like automatic response to stimuli, like. Now that we have a way to directly commun communicate with that and affect that, that is what makes it cool. Real quick, I, we only have a couple minutes left, but I wanted to ask, sneak in this question for both of you. Favorite game of the year so far? What's your, at, at present, uh, what's your game of the I year? I mean, it's not a VR game as much as I want it to be. I'm, I mean, obviously, we're all drooling and waiting for, for Fallout 4 and, and VR on Vive, and then we all got Skyrim, so that, you know... But um, but mine is 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 the most obvious answer. It's either the the Zelda, the new Zelda on mm -hmm. Switch, or the new Mario on Switch. I mean, th those games are great just, games. I mean, it's it's they're so good that you're just like, like oh man. I mean, you're just like God. These guys are just masters at, you know, the thing with Mario. Or I guess both of the games. They're very they're very light on story. I mean, I guess Zelda's got a lot more going on, but Mario's super light on story. It's the same story. It's mm -hmm. the princess is getting kidnapped by Bowser <laughs> and, you know, added in that, you know, they're, he's going and kidnapping or he's stealing wedding accoutrements for his big wedding. But it's like, there's no story beyond that. And it's like, but I don't even care. I'm just like, and I'm the story guy. I want, I want, I want more. I want, I want to hear people talk. I want to know, I, I, like, I, and I'm just like, that's, that's, I'm like, I don't even give a shit that there's no story. I'm like, I'm, I don't know. So that's probably my favorite. I, I know there's other ones that I'm forgetting, but th those ones, those oh the new the new Metroid maybe it, on the th the the only 3D Metroid we'll ever get. When I say 3D, I mean like you know, <laughs> 3DS like turn the 3D up, guys like turn it on. Um, that's the only 3D Metroid we're ever gonna get because Nintendo's just moving. Over. They're like ah fuck this, <laughs> no more 3D games. I'm like buying games. It's like not 2D only. It's the f the system is called the 3DS. I'm am I the only one that likes it? Am I the only human being that wants to play games in 3D? I even would hold my system all stiff back before they did the new 3D. Or, you know the one that actually tracks your face just because I I was so in awe at the fact that I could look at a screen and it was in 3D. And thank God we got at least one old school side scrolling Metroid game. But obviously, every answer is Nintendo, like for me. So, what about you, William? I think mine's going to be a bit of a cheat answer because the game's not out yet. But, uh, Bullshit! Uh, no, it's, uh, it's Minute, which is um, a cool little indie uh, game uh, where uh, it's being published by Devolver. Yeah, that and, game and, a, awesome. and a lot of like a oh, lot yeah, of I did see this one, yeah. A, it's a lot great of game. very yeah. a lot of very good people from the indie scene who've like worked on stuff like Nuclear Throne. Great game. On like my art directors working on it, Dominic Johan. And uh, and that and I think like seeing that's go that's gonna be on like that's gonna be on PS4 or on, on you know uh, I don't know when, but what about the early Switch? Next year. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be on the Switch as well. But we're we're at Sony, so I'm playing. We're, we're on a Sony thing right now. Uh, now nobody <laughs> asked me. Nobody asked me, but I'm saying for my game of the year, it's somewhere between Near Automata. What do you guys think? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Great yeah. game. You, oh, and Horizon was fucking amazing. Horizon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is God, incredible. what am I thinking? Oh my God, what was the other one that I played right before Horizon? Well, I know you like Resident Evil 7 a lot, too. Oh, God, Resident Evil 7 was fucking insane. So, yeah, I, I'm just not thinking. Like, that, ga- that game, Resident Evil 7 was easily, like, I've always been obsessed with that franchise, and, and the VR was, I mean, on the, on the what's the beefed up? What, pr- PS4 Pro. Pro, there you go. So I have that, and it's like, I, was, I started it on the regular, and then I tr- continued on the Pro, and I was like, oh, this is legitimately better uh, visually. And um, I played the whole game on, on, on the Pro and, and with people in my, you know, like we were talking about Yeah, before. we were talking about this. So, yeah, yeah like, like, you know, play that game with a group of friends, you know, and like they're sort of in the video village, you know, in a way. They're watching it mirrored on the screen and you're in the house and uh, you, you imagine that you guys have some sort of direct line of communication and you're, you're going in and everyone's freaking out at the same time and... For me, none of my friends wanted to play. They were like, we don't want to go on the, we don't want to be in there. Like, you do that. That's scary as fuck. We're scared enough just watching. So it was a blast. It, f- it really felt like in a weird way, like, I, it reminded me of the, when I was a kid playing, like, Nintendo, like, again, Nintendo, but, like, the, like, the, the, the Friday the 13th game, we'd build, yeah. like, a, we'd build, like, a pillow fort with a TV and we'd <laughs> pretend we were, you know, like, and, and now it's, like, we're literally there where it's, like, no, I'm actually in this fucking house and my friends are on the couch but it se- feels like we're maybe communicating through you know some sort of i don't know headset or something and and i'm leaning around looking down the hallway and yeah that game that game blew my mind that was like a really really good psvr title and thank god it came out because we need more big triple a psvr yeah. titles like the, the more the better who here's played uh, resident evil 7 on psvr if you haven't, I swear to God, like it's you have. Yeah, it, to. It's it is. So good. It is a game changer. I mean, you will. It, I, it, who's who's too scared to play Resident Evil? Yeah, Seven that's probably it. You know, it's not. It's 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 all right. It's not. I mean, it's scary. It's scary, but it's like you, 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 it's good. It's you need to feel that sometimes. It's really good, and you're safe if you really get scared. Just take the freaking headset off, and you're like, oh oh, I'm oh I'm just in my house or wherever my apartment. You know? <laughs> um, you'll be fine, guys. Fa- fantastic discussion today. Really appreciate yeah. you dropping by. Absolutely. Accounting Plus is coming to PS4 on PlayStation VR, obviously. Next Tuesday, December 19th, you can actually pre-order it right now on PlayStation Store. I suggest you do so, but thank you. Yeah, pre-order it because it's 20% off right now, so it's actually to save money. Get the pre-order, save a little bit of money. Look at that. 20% off if you do it now. If you're streaming from Europe, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the pre-order, but it's going to be 15% off for the first two weeks of launch. That's nice of you to do that. And there's a whole yeah. currency, you know, you're going to be fine over there. I, I am definitely I, playing. I, don't, I actually don't know. That's I right. am definitely playing this game over the holidays, guys. Thank you so much for Yeah, yeah. Us. It'll really be a fun it. break from uh, Skyrim, guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. PlayStation.